All right. <clears throat> All right. Good morning or afternoon. I wanted to give you an example of what your presentation should look like. Um, you can use any type of media or any type of platform to record yourself. The important thing is just for you to get me a recording somehow, because there's no way that I can just say, oh, for theater, we're only going to do paperwork. You got to have a recording. OK, so I want to show you what my screen is going to look like when I am doing my performance or presentation for you guys. OK, so if you see, I am going to get it to where you can see this. So when I do my presentation right here, I, I would go to present. I would be recording in the background, but I will also go to present and talk about it. OK, but because I don't need to see your screen when you're presenting, when I do the practice presentation, you're not going to see my screen, but I have included the link to this presentation. OK, so. The biggest thing is just for you to take your time, speak loudly and clearly, and try not to worry about the fact that you're being recorded. And a way that you can kind of forget that you're being recording is simply to go to your presentation and have it up on your screen. So the first slide here is just an opening slide. And so you can just tell me that you're talking about um, audience etiquette for my example presentation. I won't be simply because I don't want you guys to copy off of me. Not that you would. Okay. So I'm going, this starts my presentation. Hello and welcome. I am here today to give you a presentation about the Phantom of the Opera. I'm going to show you some, talk about the synopsis of it. I will show you some videos and I'll also show you some performances of this, okay? Um, so today we are gonna talk about how do I describe the plot of a play? And the way we're gonna do that is by talking about the story of Phantom of the Opera from beginning to end. The prologue starts off and there's an auction at a theater in 1911 at the Paris Opera House. Now they're auctioning off old props and things from the theater. And one of the guys attending it is the victim Raoul de Chagny, who, as we learn later, is an important part in the show. And he purchases a paper mache music box that is a monkey who's got some symbols and you wind it up and he, he plays some music and he bashes his symbols together. And you'll see that in a video, okay? So I know in the presentation that I have a video there, but I won't show you in my practice presentation because you guys don't have a video there, okay? So then we happen to Act One. Now, Act One begins, and it is now 1881. So we've gone back, and there's a new production of Hannibal that's re rehearsing on, this, on stage. Now. The Paris Opera House had recently begun, um, I'm sorry, the Paris Opera House had recently been changed over to new owners. Now, Carlotta, she's the prima donna, or the main actress. She's the one that in the play, you get that high note and you have somebody going, ah! that's a prima donna. So, Carlotta begins to perform the new owners. And um, in the middle of that, the, uh, everyone goes into a panic because the opera ghost is there. Now, the new managers are like, they're trying to downplay the accident. But Carlotta quit. She's had enough. The opera ghost apparently is not enjoying her song because she sings is about as good as me. Suddenly, in the background, Christine Dae. She's an orphan chorus girl, and she had been a, sort of adopted by one of the dance leaders in the theater. And so she's pushed into the new role because opening night is that night. 
performed that evening, and she was a huge success. So, after the performance, um, Christine goes to her friend Meg and says, and Meg's like, oh my gosh, that was wonderful, that was wonderful. And Meg was like, is like, no, you're going to think I'm crazy, but the only reason I'm successful is because I have an angel of music, as she calls it, to who sings to her in her dreams. And she says, the only reason I'm any good is because he's teaching me music. Now, in reality, the ghost is actually visiting her, but because it's so weird and strange and unusual, Christine is saying, well, I have a ghost, I, I have a dream about it. So after the performance, um, Raul, the guy who bought the paper mache, Raul had recognized her in the performance. So he goes to the back to the dressing room and says, Little Lottie, that's their nickname. And he said, and she's like, Oh my gosh, she remember me. We were young, we were growing up um, before her dad died. And that's how they knew each other. They knew each other from before her dad died when she lived with her dad. And then she was moved to this opera house. So he says, Hey, let's go to dinner. And he leaves to go get his hat. Apparently, that's a big deal. Now, the, the phantom comes in because he's jealous, and she, and she asks him, will you reveal yourself to me? Because you're, you're not real. And so he does, and he takes her down to his lair. Now, upstairs... One of the stagehands is telling tales of the opera throats, and they're doing it as a way to make fun of him. But Madame Geary, the girl who is the dance master, she arrives and says, you need to stop or face punishment. Uh, now, in the manager's office, office role and the new owners receive the Phantom's demands. Now, the Phantom, in order to make the opera house go well and be successful, he has had a requirement that they leave a box empty for him and that they pay him. Well, the new owners, of course, are like, mm, we're not going to do that because we don't believe in the opera ghost. And that's a box that somebody else could sit in and we could actually make money off of. Okay? So the next performance happens and it's going well. She's, she's beautiful. The performance is going beautifully until the phantom interrupts the performance. He's standing up in the back above the balcony somewhere, and he is mad that his box wasn't left open. And above all the noise, his voice like rings out and says, "I thought I told you to leave my box open." Well, everybody freaks out because it's a an unknown voice, Christine pulls Meg aside and says, hey, the phantom is near. But everybody tells her, you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet, quiet. So they replace um, I'm sorry. Back up. They replace Carlotta, uh, uh, Christine, in the next performance with Carlotta. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. Okay? And so, um, so Christine is in the background and Carlotta is telling Christine, shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet, because if, um, if they did what the Phantom would happen, would ask for, then Carlotta would lose her part. So while they're getting ready to restart the performance, the Phantom accidentally, not accidentally, but on purposely, replaces Carlotta's throat spray with something else. So Carlotta gets ready to perform, and this is what comes out. So in the meantime, they, they shut the performance off, and they get ready to replace Christine Carlotta with Christine. Sorry, I get confused with the names. And the Phantom finds that old stagehand who was making fun of him, and uh, the performance starts to open up again 
Christine gets ready to take the stage, and that um, stagehand's body drops over the rafters, which ultimately ends the performance. Okay, so this was my example performance for you. Um, I did make a couple mistakes because I honestly have not practiced this very much. You can see that I'm using a lot of hand gestures that may be distracting. You all can also can see I wasn't prepared. I also made a couple mistakes. and But hopefully what you did see is that I was making eye contact with you guys or trying to make some eye contact with you. Okay. So please make sure that you take your time. You prepare this and you actually rehearse it for a little bit. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll see you soon.